And welcome to another edition of Weather and Climate Chat with Monsoon Mike Regensberger and KU's resident meteorologist, Dr. Michael Davis. Dr. Davis, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, having a lot of fun uh, past couple of weeks that we've been doing this. I've actually been doing this for a couple months now, so time marches on. Uh, we started doing this uh, little segment, and it was in the 90s, and now we're into fall weather. And uh, before we get into the actual meat and potatoes, I just wanted to throw out there a slightly fun little thing. Uh, we had talked about a month ago about what kind of leaf peeping season we were going to have, and uh, us weather people were a little bit unsure where it was going to go. But I've been hearing from people and from my own eyes, one it looks like one of the nicest falls that I've ever seen, or one one of the nicer ones. It's just beautiful. Yeah, there's a lot of color out there there's right now. A lot now, of so color. You go out and enjoy it. So we were concerned, uh, potentially, but... It looks like there was no reason for concern. It would really turn into be a nice leaf peeping season. As long as the leaves are still on the trees, we had a lot fall down earlier yeah. this week. This, with the this past week was rain kind of wind. Yeah, the, the that storm this past week was kind of the nail in the coffin for some of the leaves, but it's still still pretty good out there. Let's talk about what we just went through. Um, we uh, started the week off kind of quiet, and last week, right around this time, we had predicted that you know a, about a week from then it was going to be a little active, and we were right. Um, Wednesday was pretty active. Remnants of Patricia moved through. Yes, they did. Yeah. And we had about anywhere from about two to three inches of yep. rain around the local area. It's good rain. A 24-hour period, so quite a bit of rain. A lot of rain. Uh, so that was mainly from Patricia, correct? Yes, it was mostly from Patricia. It kind of got caught up in a cold front that was moving across the country. Uh, that generally happens with tropical systems that they right. just get absorbed by a, another low pressure. Um, a story that... I like to tell the students is when Hurricane Ike was making landfall in 2008 ish, 2009. Yeah, I remember that. Somewhere around the late 2000s. Yeah. Uh, it actually merged in with a low pressure system uh, across uh, the Great Lakes. And in Cleveland, where I'm from, they had 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts wow. that night. And that was an actual Sunday night game. And the Browns and Steelers were playing at downtown. Cleveland. That was a fun game, I'm and, sure. And they were trying to punt the ball, and the punts were only going like 10, 15 yards ah, before the funny. wind knocked him down. That's funny. I don't, I don't remember that because I'm not really a Cleveland fan like you are, but that's that's interesting. That's that's pretty funny. I try to admit that I'm a Cleveland fan, but it's embarrassing at times, but oh, that's another story. Don't worry about it. That's, that's fine. Um, okay, so uh, so then it, Wednesday was pretty interesting. I got woken up Wednesday night into Thursday morning. My whole family got woken up by a huge clap of thunder around 1 in the morning, so... Mm-hmm. When that final, uh, you know, I guess that was the, the actual front moving through or somewhere around there. And a good, good clap of thunder woke us up. So we even had thunderstorms with the storm as well. Yeah, there was some uh, thunder potential with yeah. the storm. And it was realized yeah. uh, as long as you have that strong enough updraft, you can generate lightning and thunder. Yep. So it just show, goes to show that the storm still maintained quite a punch when it was yep. moving across the eastern U.S. So now we're a seasonably cool weekend. It looks like uh, Sunday we have another front coming through. That front uh, looks like it might stall a little bit to our south and uh, could have, a distur- I think, a disturbance or a low pressure ride along it. And Sunday <laughs> might be on the cloudy, cloudy, showery side, right? Yeah, because the storm system that's currently impacting Texas today. Well, yeah. Uh, as we record this on Thursday. Well, it's but, actually no, going to air today. Friday. Yeah, we're good. Today's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Today's Friday. Uh, it's, day's good. All when you work at a together. college, one day is like the next. So I... Yeah, but they're uh, looking at a possible risk of tornadoes in Texas today. Wow. And then that risk is that moves toward the east, toward Louisiana, New Orleans, uh, Mississippi, Alabama for Saturday. And then Sunday, the storm system pretty much going to be parked over the Carolinas, Georgia, and riding up that stalled front. So that's and then what we Possibly we'll give us. impacting us early next week. So not looking like a lot of rain, just showers, more clouds and sun probably for a couple days. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't look like anything really substantial at this point. Now beyond that, uh, the Climate Prediction Center and, and the models have a pretty healthy warm-up. You're going like warm to like this, listeners. Yeah, the, well, yeah, the, most <laughs> listeners are not geeks like us that like the cold weather, so most people that are normal, unlike us, are going to love this coming week because I see some days in the low 70s. Would you agree? Yes. Some yeah. of the weather models are pushing 70, if not low 70s, by right. Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. I'm a little bit pessimistic on that. I don't think we're going to hit 70, but we're certainly really? get okay. close to it. Okay. I'm thinking more maybe upper 60s. It depends on where the ridge actually sets up. Okay. Most of the warmth looks like it's going to be further toward our west. Mm-hmm. If the high 
strengthens enough, then we might be able to get more south southwesterly flow that brings in the uh, warmth from that region. But okay, um, there's a lot still to be ironed out in the models, but it's always good to see that. 70s possibly right. returning give us a respite or one last taste of summer before right the fall really hits yeah well won't necessarily be summer because night still what, what i like about when we have these spells like that in the in the fall is it gets it can get real warm during the day but it still chills off pretty nicely at night so we'll still probably have nights in the 40s right yeah 40s it, is, if you have a yeah. high pressure system you're going to have clear skies which always right uh good radiation good for radiational cooling, cooling. yeah and you have a lot of energy leaving overnight, and temperatures can drop, and probably back to 30s, 40s. Now, it's funny you said you might be leaning toward the lower end of what some of those models are saying, because I read in one of the, the National Weather Service forecast discussions out of Mount Holly, I believe we were talking about their discussions last week. I read that, they, and this was a couple of weeks ago, they said that if anything, the models seem to be... Uh, a little bit underestimating some of the high temperatures. Like that last warm spell we had, I think they were saying mid-70s, and some areas had upper 70s. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I guess, you, wh- why was that? I, I, I just think that the high might be a little too weak or a little too far okay. uh, west, essentially not bringing up that energy. I very well could be wrong. Yeah, it's we'll not see. the first time I've been no, <laughs> wrong and probably not the last. Yeah, no, it'll be, it'll be fun to see because... Uh, I guess, uh, well, we, you and I can have a little contest because I actually think we'll make it into the 70s and you think we'll stay in the 60s. So next week we'll tease each other and see who's right, okay? Okay, we'll do that. Yeah, I, I'm thinking we might have one day even as high as 73. That's just my, my feeling. So That's very bullish of you. I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. I'm going to go bold. for it. And believe me, folks, it's painful for me to say that because I don't like that kind of weather in November, but I'm going to say it. So. Yeah, but the average <laughs> high for this time of year is... Upper 50s, yeah, 58, so that's a good, 59. So either way, yeah. either way, folks, so. we're arguing over 68 versus 73. Either way, it's still a good 10, 15 degrees above normal. I think most yeah. viewers out there would appreciate us being above average for temperature rather right. than below. Right, right. Uh, how's the rest of November looking? I mean, uh, second week in November looks like we get back a little closer to normal, but still remaining a slightly on the higher side. Yeah, and then I think we're going to start getting, <laughs> getting a little more, more average probably by mid, late November. Still a little too far out to give any sort of idea for what Thanksgiving right. might hold for us, but we'll see. I mean, if the Climate Prediction Center is showing us a very uh, substantial warming for the next week, and they're actually calling, last time I checked, for an average November, it'd be interesting to see what happens by the end. So if we're going to be well above average, does that mean we're going to be well below average mm-hmm. come later in the month? That's a possibility. We might be... Uh Shoveling some snow on Thanksgiving. Well, that's that's extreme, but I'm just putting it, putting it out there because yesterday, as it's you know, not unheard of. Though. Yesterday <laughs> wasn't a very uh, exciting anniversary. Four years ago, yesterday was the the great pre-Halloween snowstorm mm-hmm. of our area. And three years ago was Sandy. Was Sandy same day? So that was a very active day in weather history. Mm-hmm. And yesterday was kind of well, well, technically you could say that 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 clap of thunder that woke me up was one in the morning. So that was the same day still. So I guess mm-hmm. there's something to be said about October 29th. And, and I remember, I think it was you that posted the video of Jim Cantori in yes. Harrisburg. Yeah, that thunder was snow. so funny. Yeah, there's only one of the very few times that Cantori's actually heard thunder snow, and he was like a kid in a candy store. It's, to me, that was a little bit overdone. I, I love Jim Jim Cantori, but I was like, did you just see the second coming of Christ or something? I mean, the way he was acting. Oh my God, thunder! I'm like, I've heard thunder snow a couple of times. It's not that great. Mm-hmm. It's exciting, but it's you know, yeah, that was a little little overdone for TV. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's his whole business with yeah. the Weather Channel and with uh, ratings and people yeah. want to watch it. Uh, Cantori does tend to overblow a few things every now and then. You could say that. <laughs> um, I actually have a personal story about Jim Cantori. <laughs> but, uh, my family was down in uh, Florida. Okay. And it was a tropical storm coming through. Right. And it was... I forget which one it was exactly, but he was there holding on to like the lamppost and right. going, "Oh my goodness, we're having so strong winds!" And we we're like off camera, we're standing there, and <laughs> it was a stiff wind, but it was you're definitely not, you're not, you're not blowing it up anywhere. Radio, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's all for it's all for you know the drama and the ratings, I guess. Well, and, and the Weather Channel, I guess we could make this kind of like a little mini topic. They've kind of gone through some uh, changes over the years. In the 80s when they started and into the 90s, it was straight-ahead weather. And then in the 2000s, it turned into almost 
reality TV, mm-hmm. where it was like constant, you know, reality shows, storm chasers, this, that, and the other thing. Now it seems like they're starting to transition back to a little more hardcore weather, which is good. Still not as good as it was in the 80s, but getting back there. I yeah, think. it's getting back to the yeah. good old-fashioned yeah. weather forecasting as opposed to... What do you think's behind that? The, uh, I think it's just a demand that the essentially the viewers wanted more... Uh, Hardcore scientific, weather, yeah, yeah. Uh, weather forecasting. Like personally, I've always watched the Weather Channel for growing up as a kid, me too, and, and undergraduate school. But then they started doing the reality program. So when I would come home at like three, four in the afternoon, when yep. there was a risk of severe weather, I want to see what's going on. We have a show about lifeguards in California. <laughs> like, that's had not... that happen to me many times myself. Yeah, and interestingly enough, there was an article this week that summarized the. Uh, Weather Channel Company being bought by IBM. Mm, Okay. Uh, I didn't read too much into it, so I don't really know the nuts and bolts of it, but I can certainly report back next week on that. But I I think it's interesting that a computer company would be buying uh, pretty much a stake in the weather company because Weather Channel actually owns places like Weather Underground. Right. If you you go to that uh, weather website. Go to that website, yep. And... It just seems like if they're looking more into the computer models, perhaps they're going to be adding their computational uh, powers to the uh, weather models there. So mm. maybe it's beneficial for weather forecasting. And I know uh, I had heard rumors, and may- maybe it's already on the air, and it's just not on my cable system yet, but wasn't the AccuWeather planning on starting their own national network as well, too? And I'm not talking about the little local AccuWeather channel that we have here, but I had heard there was actually going to be a national network to compete with the Weather Channel. Yeah, I, I've heard of that. Yeah. Uh, I think they've been talking about that for several years I don't think now. It, I don't know if it's on the air yet. I materialized from yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know where that stands now. I'd like to see that happen. Cause I, I certainly would like it. Because they're good people. And uh, yeah, it'd be some competition. So, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I think we've covered enough here. We're, we're approaching 15 minutes, so that's good. So, so in summary, we have uh, you know some clouds and showers coming up Sunday and then pretty darn warm uh for most of this coming week so makes p- most people happy and then we'll reconvene next weekend and hopefully have some well hopefully for us uh have some cooler weather coming there beyond sounds good all right uh monsoon mike check out monsoon mike's weather headquarters on facebook and Dr. Your page. michael davis's weather forecasts all right sounds good we got some good shows coming up in the coming weeks we won't mention any topics but we do have some interesting possibly a guest or two coming up in a couple of weeks so stay tuned for that until next week bye-bye bye